Hey guys, I'm so insanely disappointed right now. I recorded episode 3 and my solid state drive was full and so it did not capture the audio from my condenser mic and at least I have the audio from the shotgun mic attached to my camera. So the audio quality is not nearly as good. I just doing this intro as like a disclaimer. I <laughs> I'm so bummed about it, but I hope you guys don't mind the audio. You know, uh, I'll make sure that things are much smoother. I know it's just episode three, so I'm still getting some some of the kinks out. But uh, this was just some stupid thing that has never happened to me before. And then it was like, I guess it was gonna happen eventually, and it happened to happen on episode three of this podcast. Anywho, uh, I hope you enjoy it nonetheless. Hey, what's going on everyone? Welcome to episode three of Blacking Off. And sorry I'm a little bit late, you know. I, I want to release these Monday morning. But uh, I had so much to do. So much stuff's going on. I'm on team no sleep right now. It, it's, it's been pretty crazy. I can't remember the last time I've actually had like just a thorough night's rest. Where I didn't have to like interrupt it very shortly. Like just have a brief like nap or something like that. I think at some point in this weekend I was so tired. I had to like sleep in increments of like two hours and then do something and then an hour nap here something like that and uh whenever i think about that now i think about there's a tweet because i do the twitter trash series and there was this girl <laughs> that said that men taking naps is gay as fuck and uh, i just i always think about that uh well at least recently because i've been actually napping i usually don't take naps but that's kind of what i've been doing just to kind of not absolutely lose my mind but hopefully things will kind of slow down but it, it's all I'm working towards a lot of stuff, so it is what it is. Sometimes you can't get a lot of sleep, and uh, so. But it feels good. I, I really like uh, doing this podcast, and I appreciate some of the feedback I've been getting. I've been getting some people say they really enjoy. It. You know, just two episodes in, and they're like, "Hey, I like this. I enjoy the format." And uh, something that I'm going to be doing more is I'm going to be breaking up these the clips more because usually I'll just select one segment from the podcast and then I'll upload that in a separate video. But maybe I should do like two of them or something, something like that. Because usually I just want to stick to doing like three subjects. Maybe I'll do four if I feel like the show's too short or something like that. But as of right now, I really liked how the second episode came out. And I'm excited to talk about the stuff in this episode as well. Because there, <laughs> there's been a lot of weird stuff happening. And um, I think you guys are going to be really interested in um, just, just everything. Everything. So the first thing, though, I want to talk about, I'm just kind of going to just... Squeeze right, right into it. Just because you defend somebody like Trump doesn't mean you that you like them. This subject doesn't come up very often, but every once in a while, I will see somebody mention something, or you know, I'll, it's usually someone that's not fond of who they perceive me to be, and that's totally fine. So some people even ask me, they're like, "Hey." Are you a conservative? I think it, it, what happens is that people have like a certain perception of me. And then when they actually start paying attention to me, then they're kind of like confused. And then they'll usually be like, oh, are you? What's going on? I'm not really, I don't really understand your politics. Because, and it's like, you know, it's surface. And I, and I get it. It doesn't bother me. I know there's a lot of people, I see a lot of people that are bothered by this. Like I see, for example, I, I listen to the Joe Rogan experience like a lot. And I'll usually see him be very bothered by being associated with the right. And then he has to typically, you know, explain himself. Oh, I believe in this. I believe in that. I believe in this. I believe in that. I'm not this. All the time, all the time, all the time. And obviously, you know, Joe Rogan's really famous. So it's going to be infinitely more because, and, and it just happens to be the people that he talks to. He's friendly with a lot of people who do consider themselves conservatives. So it happens, you know, and, and the way that I see it though, and the why it doesn't bother me first and foremost, for, foremost Ugh, getting a little tongue tied, is because I know who I am, and 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 it's like it kind of reminds me of people 
that gets so bothered when, you know, you question their sexuality or something, like a straight dude who's very insecure and, or maybe has something to hide, maybe he's in the closet, what, maybe whatever it is. And then it's like, hey, man, um, you like girls or you gay, bro? <laughs> whatever it is. And then they get super defensive and like, whoa, what was that response? And I kind of feel the same way about, say, being asked about political affiliations because I don't really do that whole left-right paradigm, um, have a specific team that I'm just cheering for. I, I think overall it's kind of silly. Just, you know, that's just my opinion. And it's not anything that, like, I learned recently or something. This is how I've always been. I always wanted to just, like, figure things out. What's the best way to do things? And one thing I've always learned is that people who are on a team are predestined to have some stupid outlook um, to the people who they consider the opposition. You know, uh, it, it's and look, I know tribalism is kind of within us. But I think it, it, it'll really benefit to kind of fight that urge to just want to be on a team all the time. Now, the thing is why some, like I wanted to talk about this specifically is uh, uh, there was, um, I was tagged in a tweet and I didn't see it until I saw, um, who was it? It was Greg, it was uh, Armored Skeptic. He's a YouTuber if you don't know who he is. And uh, he was tagged in it as well. And there was like some conservative YouTubers or conservative personalities. And then he and I were in the thumbnail as well. And he, he took offense to it. And um, I saw that and I just kind of like, you know, I chuckled. Because it's fine. Like, it, it, I, it, doesn't, it doesn't really bother me. And uh, it kind of reminded me of not that long ago. I made a video. I can't remember the dude's name. Forgive me. But he was, he was, like, he was on the debate team. And he got in trouble with uh, his college professor. There's all this beef. This probably happened in like September or November of 2019. And there was like some people that were very, you know, woke that were trying to say, oh, the information, everything that he's giving you is completely wrong and, and this and that. And they're also saying that he was racist and all this other stuff. So it kind of like took it with a grain of salt. There was somebody that did say you need to look into this further and I did unlist the video for a while until I did a little bit more research and I'm like, I don't see anything that you're claiming to be accurate. You know, I was looking into it. I was trying to verify what some people were saying, but it was just a bunch of people making up stuff to defend uh, someone that they like, someone's, you know, the ideals that they lined up with. And uh, so I, I got an email and the email started off by saying, I understand you're very right wing. And I just started laughing. It was just funny to me because I'm like, okay, I, I, I get it. You don't, you don't watch my stuff. You don't know who I am. And just on the surface, if you check out some of my stuff, you might get a certain impression of me. You know, because people a lot of times think in binary. They think in tribalism. So they think, well, if you're not making videos completely shitting on these people, you must be for this. And I'm like, no, that's, that's not how the world works entirely, especially not me. So there is, man, I can go back into like 2016, I think. This was when obviously Trump was starting to gain all his popularity and that's when uh, there was so much hatred for him as well. And I saw so much propaganda just thrown at him, just calling him every buzzword in the book, making up stuff, just lying to just try to smear him. And it was so annoying and it was so unfortunate because in my opinion, that's not how you beat somebody. That's not how you beat an opponent. It, it doesn't seem to work from what I've seen. It usually kind of empowers them or something. So I think it, I think it, so it was like 2016, I made the video. It was called Defending Trump is Not an Endorsement. Now, some people on the service are like, what do you mean? Like, you, you defend somebody, you, you're, you're vouching for them. And I'm like, no, that's not even, that's not how defending someone works. You can defend people who you don't like. You can defend people that you have no association with. You can be just caught in something. You could be like a third party to a, you witnessed an argument happen. You witnessed something. And let's say like it was a, a, a couple arguing in public and then the girl strikes the dude. And then like, you know, the police show up and then she tries to say, oh, he hit me. And all of a sudden I say, hey, I saw everything. No, she hit him. I don't even know them, but I'm going to defend the dude because it's the right thing to do. And so just kind of like on a moral basis, on a moral standpoint, 
that's why it's like, hey, man, you guys are lying and you're making up a bunch of BS and it's not cool. But don't get it twisted. This isn't my guy. Like, you know, just just kind of like, you know, just to let you guys know, this ain't my guy. And it was no big deal. Like I said, people who followed me, people who understood why I was in, you know, making the videos I was making, just pushing back against a lot of the bullshit. That's pretty much what it came down to. It wasn't trying to endorse anyone or anything like that. Like, I haven't really been excited for a president or anything or a candidate since uh, Ron Paul. And this was more like, say, back in the day, like 2008 and everything. I didn't really have, I still, I was an independent. But um, some libertarian ideals, not all, but some were like, okay, I understand this. And then I saw Ron Paul. Um, I saw Gary Johnson, which Gary Johnson kind of disappointed me uh, overall, like, say, especially in the 2016 election. But Gary Johnson back then, I'm like, oh, I kind of like some of the stuff this guy's saying. And then Ron Paul, too. And Ron Paul was surging. He was like Bernie Sanders, but, you know, obviously center, center right, right? So he was like Bernie Sanders to me. And what I mean, like, I don't mean, like, say, ideal-wise, but in the, the grassroots movement, there was a bunch of people that were supporting the hell out of him. And one thing that's the most important thing why I say they were like each other is that the establishment despised him. The establishment tried to do everything. They were smearing him like crazy. It wasn't working so well. I remember they were trying to say things that, oh, he's racist as well. It, it was just nothing. You know, obviously there was little things that people could tie to Trump. It was kind of like, say, when he was talking about, oh, uh, when Mexico, when they're, they're not bringing their best people. And so that whole thing, people were acting like he's talking about literally all Mexicans. Or it's like, come on, guys. I know you hate him, but be real about this. You know that's not what he means. Like, and, and that, and just even saying that is kind of enough for people to be like, oh, well, you, you, you want to bang Trump, don't you? It's like, no, I just, I just think you guys are being irrational. That's all. So people were being irrational to Ron Paul, and hey, Ron Paul was a, uh, like, just to kind of go off on a little bit of a something. Like Ron Paul was, he was, he was kind of killing him, and he, he excited me because he was the only guy that was talking about. The military industrial complex and the federal reserve it was kind of unheard of there were people who were just slack-jawed yokels just very generic people that only pay attention to sound bites and they vote based on those sound bites that were hearing things about the federal reserve and then learning that the federal reserve is not even a federal it's not even federal it's just called the federal reserve it's a fucking bank that's putting us infinitely more in debt People were learning about this. Bro, people that like regular people, blue collar people were like, what's this now? And the establishment's like, oh, we can't have that. We can't, we can't have that, bro. So th that's like the stuff that I was more, but see, it had nothing to do with like the left or the right. It was more of, I say, are you talking about real shit? And to me, he was saying a lot of real stuff. And like I said, it's not... Just because those were the biggest things that I liked about him doesn't mean that I like the entire package. Like some people even say, oh, he's a creationist. And I'm like, okay, so I'm pretty sure that dude just listening to him speak, listening to Ron Paul speak, he said, uh, my beliefs are not going to be interjected into my job. And I was like, that's cool. That's because that's you know, a lot of people disagree with that sentiment. They're like, I want my ideals to infect the job. <laughs> I want things to be my way, my way or the highway. Sorry, I had to put that in there. Uh, still a Limp Bizkit fan. <laughs> but no, on the real, I'm getting a little bit off track, you know, because there's a lot of people that even, they like, like I was just saying, I'm not trying to like go, I'm not making this some type of like, oh, Ron Paul was great or whatever. I'm not trying to make it some type of thing like that. I'm just saying even people like Stephen Colbert, right why he was still doing the colbert report when he's doing like an interview doing a real interview as himself saying yeah like ron paul i can't remember if that was in the 2008 or 2012 election i really don't remember um i just remember seeing that interview and i'm like damn you and this dude and now look who steve stephen colbert really is now that he despises trump just to kind of let you know that ron paul was kind of like you know a lot of people were, were messing with him and kind of the same thing Bernie Sanders, too, there's a lot of people that are like, oh, he doesn't seem so bad once you cut through all the BS, once you cut through all the propaganda, you know, and there's a lot of propaganda coming out on, on his side, too. 
there's a lot of people who are far, far uh, further on the right that don't want to believe that. But I try to say, hey, guys, do you know the type of stuff that they were saying about Trump that's not true? They're doing the same thing for him because rest assured, there's a lot of stuff that Bernie wants to do that would mess with a lot of people's money. And I'm talking about these companies that pay no taxes and whatnot, but I'm not trying to get into that. I'm just saying that I've always considered like just kind of wrap things in a kind of a, in a little bit of a bow is that I've always just considered myself in the center and and a lot of people get it twisted and they say things like, oh, you're 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 a fence sitter. You, you don't have any you don't believe anything. That's what they think a centrist is. And I always say uh, the, people like that don't exist. People like that, they pretend they don't have like uh, uh, morals or they don't have conviction. They pretend because they want to try to get along with everybody. It's fake though. If you ask them deep, you, you're, you're good friends with them. They're always gonna have an answer about stuff, always. And I'm not somebody that pretends, you know, that's not, because in my opinion, that's not what a centrist is. A centrist is somebody who is neutral until you ask them their opinion on something. And once they think about it rationally, and maybe, hey, it may not even be completely rational, but they will say, according to what I think is that makes the most sense, this is what I believe. And what I believe may fall further on the left or further on the right. And that's just been me. Like, so, like, a lot of people always say I'm socially liberal and fiscally conservative. Yeah, that's a real thing. A lot of people like that. Like, some people that follow me, they're like, oh, um, you're, uh, do you, what do you believe? And I'm like, oh, whatever. I'm like, I don't. Are you religious? No. Like, uh, what do you think about abortion? I'm like, I don't care. I just to be real. I remember I did a stream and I was like, guys, I'm gonna be real, man. I'm, I'm not gonna pretend like I'm tossing and turning at night that all this stuff's happening. I'm like, I'm not gonna pretend like I'm a hypocrite, especially when I hear about the famine, and disease, and war, and all this stuff that happens outside of our nice country. I'm like, I'm not even thinking about them until like a news report comes up, and I feel really bad. But then I go on to start playing video games afterwards. Like I'm not, I'm not gonna pretend like I'm all high and mighty and I'm on the moral high ground and that I really care about all this stuff deeply. I only care about it when I think of when I'm actually thinking about it. But other than that, I'm not losing sleep. And that's just me being real. Like it sounds bad, but I genuinely believe most people are like that. Most people are worrying about their own family, their own job. They're worrying about that stuff. And so you see a lot of people that are grandstanding on Twitter, on Facebook, on the internet, trying to say, you don't care about this. Oh, what about all the tens and millions of aborted this and that? And I'm like, well, the, what, what do you, do you like, is what, what do you get? Like, are you, what's happening? Is, are you doing anything about this? So I, I'm just saying, like, I, I know it sounds bad to, uh, it, like, it might sound bad to a lot of people, but I really think it's like kind of take a look at yourself, look in the mirror, you know? But kind of going back to why uh, I said, like, people think that I'm conservative. So it's not only that. I, I've kind of forgot to mention some of the some of the shows that I went on. You know, I've, I've talked to Steven Crowder. I've talked to Paul Joseph Watson. I've talked to them about stuff. There were certain things that they were interested in, and I was totally fine with talking to them. Hell, I'd, I'd talk to anyone. I would talk to Jank Uger if he was interested in talking to me. I would talk to Anna Kasparian. I would actually love to talk to Jimmy Dore. I love Jimmy Dore. I, I, I think he's funny. I love how angry he gets. Like, like I, I, can't, I get him. I get that guy. You know, there's a lot of people I would love to talk to that are um, on anywhere. As long, if you're happy to talk to me, I'm happy to talk to you. If you want to be a hostile piece of trash, then I'm like, I don't want to talk to you because I'm not interested in talking to shitty human beings that are, that are going to treat me like shit. If you can be cordial and talk to me about things that you disagree with, that's okay. But, I mean, that's kind of like a relic of me though because I'm more like say where I'm at now is I kind of want to just hang out and have a good time because I'm a little burnt out like to be honest man I'm, I'm a little burnt out I, I kind of I don't talk about politics as much this is probably the most I've really talked about and went into depth about this stuff you know and uh that's kind of where I want to keep it I want to keep things a little more lighthearted and just just kind of have fun and uh that's pretty much it man so am I a conservative no. Uh, do I care that people get it mixed up? Not really. Just kind of in the center somewhere. Maybe a little bit more left, but who fucking cares? Poop pants. What? Poop pants.
poo pants? Poop my pants. You, you pooped your pants? Poop my pants. Oh. Caitlin Bennett, a.k.a. Gun Girl. Um, I know she's currently affiliated with Liberty Hangout. And I know at some point, uh, I think she was affiliated with Infowars. I don't know if she's still with them or anything like that. But my first, uh, the first time I saw her was, was it, it was, actually it was just a little bit before I saw anything with her with Infowars. But she probably was with them at the time. But the first thing I saw was a picture of her that was circulating. It was making the rounds because it kind of, it didn't look very flattering. So, so what it was, it was her in this, um, this sequenced, like, flesh-colored dress. And she was wearing high heels, and, of course, she had her gun with her. She's gun girl. And it just, it just wasn't a good dress. I mean, to be real. And I think I even mentioned this in a Twitter trash. I think, I think we, I think me and my, my longtime friend, I had him as a guest. Uh, his name's Ed. And, um... Yeah, I was actually really, <laughs> I was like, wow, I can't believe she thought this looked good. I mean, just to be real, somebody actually took a picture. They replied with a plucked chicken, and then they put the <laughs> just a, like they photoshopped like a gun just <laughs> right by it. I'm looking at it, and I'm kind of like, I don't know about that, bro. Really and, pasty. Uh, and then somebody kind of, you know, really made it. <laughs> <laughs> So, it looks the same. <laughs> it's totally like, what's the difference? <laughs> and it just looks so accurate. And it's and and this is kind of a theme for Caitlyn. She seems like she's blissfully unaware of how cringe and ridiculously she is, and like with everything she does. So the the, the next thing that I saw her do was um, she said something because it was around the holidays and she said it's merry christmas not happy holidays or something like that you know trying to be all cool and oh yeah i'm so cool merry christmas you know and then she starts shooting her gun like it's all like man that was super dope that was amazing it's not happy holidays it's merry christmas bunch of PC pansies you know but hey there's probably a lot of people that like stuff like that I don't know man I, I think it's incredibly cringy so uh, but I really didn't hear that much about her uh, from there because that was probably like late 2018 probably like December 2018 I hadn't heard from her for most of 2019 really uh, it wasn't until fairly recently uh, she started and she's probably been doing this for a long time but like I said I just haven't been seeing it she she is she goes around college campuses and you know she's carrying her gun typically and uh she kind of antagonizes some of the some of the students but mo more importantly she it, i think she's trying to troll them you know but it it just seems to completely backfire that's what it kind of that's what is coming off to me and and I, I would say the vast majority of the world there because she'll like ask questions and the students typically are just giving answers like I don't really care about what you're asking me it's no big deal like I don't remember everything but one thing that I know that made a lot of different rounds was like they're asking like oh, how, oh she was asking how do you feel about uh tampons and the men's restroom and some one of the guys was was something like oh, I don't care that's fine like Okay. What about tampons and pads and men's restroom for men who have periods? If you're really getting that worked up about it, why does it matter? Like, I don't care. It's just sitting there. I'm not going to take it. Okay. So we should provide men with tampons. I mean, if a dude wants a tampon for some reason, he can have a tampon. That's not my business. What would he use it for? I don't know. That's his problem. What would he use a pad for? His problem. Do you think they should seek medical advice if they're having bleeding? I mean, if they want to, I don't really care. Why should I care? And that's literally how I feel. Like, say, why would I trip out on that? Why would I trip out on tampons in the men's restroom? Especially the first thing that came to my mind as, like, say, if I saw that, if I saw tampons in the men's restroom, my first thought, and this is this is me, probably just being this, a straight bro, is that, oh, uh, you know, maybe you're out with your daughter. Like, you have a daughter, you know, maybe she's really young. 
and uh, she you she needs one, you know, or something, and you're gonna you walk her into the men's restroom. You're with her, and you just grab one of those things real quick, and something, you know, take her into the stall or whatever the case is, because you want to be a good parent, and it's good for the resources to be accessible on both sides. That's my first thought. Obviously, the other thought is, oh, this is for uh, trans, uh, what would you call it, trans men? Yeah, yeah trans men. Women uh, transitioning to men is trans men. Yes, yes, I think. I, I, I always get that confused. I'm like, trans woman. A trans woman is a woman that has transitioned. So, trans men, okay. We're, we're just, we're, we're, we're doing this together, guys. We're, we're, we're making sure we're getting everything right. We don't want to be, uh, we don't want to uh, have somebody, you know, try to come down hard on me. And be like, this guy's being transphobic, and then they completely delete my channel. <laughs> well, I, I guess I probably wouldn't even be that mad if my channel got deleted because, um, as I've stated before, uh, there's a seasonal algorithmic abyss. And then it takes a while for the channel to recover and get the views that it normally does, and people get the notifications like they normally do, and all that stuff, you know. It, it's, it's unfortunate, but it is what it is. So, anywho, Kaylin Bennett has also been the butt of a joke and a, and a rumor that's been flying around. But the, the messed up thing about this rumor is that most people think it's true because they haven't looked into it at all. So a lot of people think Caitlyn Bennett pooped her pants at like a college party or something. So a lot of times people will say like they'll call her poopy pants or... Um, some other, there's some other nicknames I can't really, you know, they kind of escape me right now. But yeah, so usually things like that. And I think at one of the latest events, there I saw a chance of people saying, where's your diaper? Where's your diaper? Where's your diaper? So I imagine that must be really annoying for her, especially as I mentioned, it's, it was a rumor, it's not true. I just, I looked on the internet really quickly to see where that came from. Is there any confirmation? Who made it up? And um, I don't remember the guy's name because I'm doing this on the fly. I'll, yeah, right. I probably should have been a little bit more prepared. Um, but if I find his tweet or the guy that was really, because he, this guy, if I find him, I'll put it up there. But I did see th this dude and a few other people, they're doing a podcast with a Barstool Sports and Barstool Sports is a pretty big Twitter page and other organization that does a lot of stuff and um, he introduced that theory and um, on one of their live podcasts or episodes or whatever it is. So Kevin you're in it with Gun Girl. Hey Caitlin how does it feel having the whole world know that you pooped your pants? How does it feel not you pooped your pants! <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm here with Caitlin Bennett, uh, aka Gun Girl, right? Mm -hmm. Is it true that you shit yourself at a Kent State party? It's not. Is it true that you just lied She's to lying. Me? She's lying. She, I went to her Twitter account. Did she, she poop herself? <laughs> yes, the internet said so. I don't know. If the internet says so, you pooped your pants. She and then I think on Twitter is where he helped uh, spread the rumor even more. And so uh, people <laughs> didn't even, they, they, they don't like, they, they don't like Caitlin at all. So they just ran with it. And it's to the point where people that I know that don't really follow anything like this at all, they've heard about her and they're like, oh, didn't she poop her pants? <laughs> and it's just like, that is so messed up. <laughs> like, I don't, I don't, I'm be honest, like, I don't necessarily care, but at the same time, I'm like, damn, that's, uh, it, it would be pretty damn annoying. If, if somebody was trying to run with that. But at the same time, I haven't really, because I don't really pay attention to her, so I haven't really seen her try to defend herself or anything and say, I didn't do that, it's false. And I'm sure she said something. I don't know. I, do, I don't watch her videos. I really don't um, because I'm really not that interested. Now, the thing is, and, and, and I think this is really important, people like Caitlin Bennett... People that kind of go around trolling, trying to uh, get a rise out of people, the best way to handle them is to ignore them, is to not trip out. And what happened at the last event where, you know, like I said, they were saying, where's your diaper and clapping and everything? They were being very hostile, you know, protesters and stuff. 
and uh, I think like drinks were getting thrown, stuff was being thrown. So then it got to the point where it's like, all right, now it's getting to the to the illegal stuff because when you throw drinks at people and stuff like that, it's considered assault. It's not. It's never a good idea to do. You know, it's like one of those things if you're in a club and someone throws a drink at you, you can punch them in the face and you tell the cops and they're like, all right, I guess you're defending yourself. That's some real stuff right there. So it shouldn't come to that. And, and, and legitimately, like, I saw tweets and stuff and like she's like, oh, I'll be back. And obviously, much more eyes are on Caitlyn now. And a bunch of people are coming to her defense so like, see, this is getting out of control. You guys are crazy. I can't believe you're doing this. The radical left and all this stuff. And it's like, well, there is a kernel of truth to that. There's a lot of you people that are, you know, pretty woke that are just being hostile. And it's like, yo, that video of, of the guy that was being um, like chill and some of the other people that were being chill when she was asking them stuff. And they're like, yeah, whatever. I don't see anything wrong with that. That's how you handle that stuff. Like if you don't like her, you want her to go away. Don't give her anything. And I say that about a lot of people, man. I say there's always these people that, you know, they, they, they don't like certain people or groups. And then they put them on a, a pedestal and then they villainize them. And all of a sudden they're much bigger. And I always say you laugh at people, you ignore them, you, you just be like, whatever, you don't really matter. And then all of a sudden it feels, it just feels like, like, oh, I'm like, say if I'm Caitlin, I'd be like, well, this is a waste of time. I'm getting nothing. I'm getting no good footage. Nobody's really able to laugh at this, but I don't know, man. I'm still a little bit confused about her too. I'm confused because I'm pretty sure <laughs> I'm I, I actually I, I, I don't know I really am confused because some of the stuff that she's released some of the footage she's released it makes me wonder because I'm like you do realize this makes you look incredibly bad right and yet she puts her content out she keeps doing it so it also begs the it, it begs the question is she genuine like is she is she just like trying to do whatever it takes to get her name out even if it's at her own expense like humiliation or anything like she is she kind of immune to that stuff and she's like all publicity is good publicity because when i looked at some of those clips and some of the videos that she released i'm like you have to recognize that this makes you look stupid you have to realize that these people are schooling you by not giving you the time of day and then, boom, you did get a little bit from that last thing where people were kind of coming at you. So, I mean, that's how that thing goes. I mean, and let me be clear. Just because I think Caitlyn Bennett, Caitlyn Bennett is really silly doesn't mean that I want her to, you know, I don't want her to be dragged through the streets. I don't want anyone to do anything to her, man. Like, like what I was saying before is I think the best way to go about things, it doesn't matter what side of the spectrum you're on, man, when we're talking about politics. If there's some people that are being really stupid, I mean, a lot of times just 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 don't 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 give them what they want. You 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 gave her exactly what she wanted, and so it's like, whoop, well, there you go. She's gonna be back, and then there's probably other people that are come back and say, oh well, if you have the right to this, or we have the right to do this, and I'm like, you're giving her exactly what you want, like exactly what she wants, man. She's gonna come back. She's gonna film some more stuff, and she's gonna go viral again. And I imagine what you would really want for her is to go away. It kind of reminds me of um, Anita Sarkeesian. I'm sure 99.9% .9 of you people know who Anita Sarkeesian is. If you don't know who she is, she, she ran a nonprofit organization called Feminist Frequency. She was a big part of the whole Gamergate thing. She was really a perpet perpetuating the lie that Gamergate is a harassment campaign towards women and all this stuff when it was about a lack of journalistic integrity in the game, the gaming community, right? De developers and games. You guys know this stuff, but just for like the very small few people that are probably listening to this and are like, who's Anita Sarkeesian? What, what does she have to do with this? Well, yeah, she was, she was that person. I've made a lot of videos. If you go on my channel, my YouTube channel, some black guy and type in Anita Sarkeesian, you'll see um, probably like, there's gotta be like, close to 10 videos, I'm assuming, on Anita Sarkeesian. Now, I'm bringing her up because 
it was very obvious that she, the the well is run dry because she was getting a ton of money back in the day. And then after a while, people started to realize she's fake. Money kind of started to dry up. And she started to go on like a campaigns to raise more money. She was trying to complain about more stuff. You know, trying to get back into the industry, trying to get back into, into the public eye. And you started to see people tweet out, don't respond to her stuff. We don't need to make her relevant again. And legitimately, I totally agreed. I saw some of the stuff that she was saying, some of the most egregious things she was saying, the same kind of stuff she was saying back in the day, like four years ago. Damn, actually even probably like what, more than, no, four years ago. Damn, actually she was around, she was, she's was. she been around for a long time because I think she was around in uh, 2014, 2015 as well. Like 2015 and 2016, she was really, yeah, it doesn't matter. I digress on that. I'm just saying that the best way to go about that is just to ignore her. Don't, don't, if you think what she's doing is so silly and cringy and you really, you really, you're really against all that, how ridiculous she's acting, well, it's like she's acting that way for a specific reason. So don't feed into it. And I mean, that that's, it's pretty simple, man. It's pretty simple. Obviously, if she does something, you know, like if Caitlyn did something really offensive, really hostile, then you usually want to match the same energy. I always say like, I'm always going to be cordial and respectful, even for people, even to people that I disagree with. But if you come with hostile energy, I most likely I'm going to match it. That's just how I am. Like I'm the type of person that I'm not going to start a fight. But you know, if you come in my face and try to do something, I will defend myself. That's for sure. You know, like I'm not I'm not a violent person, but I definitely it, I definitely will match your energy. That's that's one thing that I'll try to do. And I feel like that's all everybody should be match match that energy. You know, she's dumb. You play dumb. <laughs> so there's a really interesting video and a situation that's been going pretty viral. And uh, I felt like I was like, I got to talk about this because <laughs> it's taken so many twists and turns and there's a lot of different views. There isn't one like correct answer and one just proper way to go about this situation. So what I'm talking about is this little kid, nine year old, I think his name is Quaden Bales, if I, I hope I'm saying that correctly. So he's from Australia and he's uh, he has dwarfism. And I didn't, I didn't even know that was, I was like, is that a, is that a right thing to say? I'm like, can you even say that? Can you say dwarfism? Because I thought that it was like offensive to say dwarf or something like that or call a little person a dwarf. But I guess that's like a medical thing. But then again, like say, I thought it's uh, saying retarded is also um, a, a medical term or something like that too. But I, whatever, it doesn't really matter. The whole thing about this, if you guys haven't heard about it, so uh, Quaden. He uh, just gotten bullied at school, obviously um, having dwarfism. Kids are cruel, man. Kids are cruel, especially if you don't raise them correctly. If you don't raise them to have respect, you know, and tell people, hey, people are different or whatever. And you can't, you can't make, you know, like a lot of people just don't do anything with their kids. They're just like, whatever, go to school, get out of my, piss off, mate. <laughs> but um, yeah, he just got him bullied and uh, dude was just crying and he was just saying really messed up stuff like he doesn't want to live anymore stuff like that and the mother w was just filming it and stuff like that you know you've seen videos like this before and it's they're really tough to watch man so i've just picked quite my son up from school witnessed a bullying episode rang the principal and i want people to know parents educators teachers this is the effect that bullying has this is what bullying does the, the mom, she puts the video that she recorded on Facebook because that's what moms do. They put things on Facebook and naturally it, the video went viral. And as I said, like when things like this happen, when there's uh, videos of, of kids being bullied or something like that, they go insanely viral. And the thing is, they're always met with skepticism, but not right away. They're usually always received well at first like people are they're heartbroken and then they're they're just sending much support like they're always trying to do like you know really good things like uh, for example in this situation brad williams a comedian that i like a lot even though <laughs> i'll be honest he, he does sometimes talk a little bit too much about his dwarfism like 
there, I'm like, okay, I get it, bro. Like, I, you're funny. He's a funny comedian, but I'm like, dude, you gotta switch it up a little bit. Like, you you gotta switch it up. I you're funnier than this. You I this is I know this isn't all you got. And so <laughs> that's that's my only criticism. It's just like whenever people are kind of like a comedian, they're kind of a one trick pony, and it's like, oh, okay, I get it. Ha 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 ha. But um, he got involved. He did like a GoFundMe or something like that, and raised a ton of money to like take care of the family to like come through and hang out and stuff, which is this is nice, which is nice, and it raised so much more money than he was asking. I think it was like, oh, um, we need ten grand, but here's like nearly half a mil or something ridiculous it was something insane where i'm like damn man damn i wish i could have some of that money <laughs> maybe not that money specifically but it's like hey guys um everybody throw me a dollar and and then i will chill <laughs> i'm just saying but no but uh anyways i what i'm trying to get at is i wish i remembered the kid's name because uh this was a while ago some kid it was another bullying subject and um, it was another situation and everybody rallied behind this kid too. And uh, there was also some like skepticism and some weird stuff happening as well. And uh, it just it just can't be helped. When it, whenever anything like this goes viral and someone's trying to do nice things or whatever, people are always kind of like, there must be something sinister. There's gotta be something sinister involved. There has to be. And with, with the other kid, the other story, I wish I remember his name. Might have been like Michael something. I just can't remember. And um, they were like, look at this family. Look at the the parents. There's like a Confederate flag. They're all racist and this and that. And the mom's racist. And it just became like this crazy story. And I'm like, bro, what is going on? This is nuts. And uh, of course, with this story, with Quaden, the same thing happened. But just not about racism or nothing. But they were saying this kid is scamming this is like it's a scam it's a fraud it's it's he's not a kid at all and he's actually like just a an older dude with with dwarfism and, and he's like just scamming the money this was like they were playing everybody for a fool these pictures started making the rounds i mean i saw them on twitter i saw them on facebook i saw them everywhere and a lot of people believed it immediately immediately kind of like i was just talking about Caitlyn Bennett, gun girl, in one of the other segments. How, like, the, they said she pooped her pants at a college party or something like that. And no one verified it. People were just like, oh, I heard she pooped her pants. Oh, she pooped her pants. Ha, ha, ha. And then it just went like wildfire. And then everybody believes that she pooped her pants at a college party. So, like, that's how this kind of went. Where they saw those pictures and they're like, look at this guy. He's holding all this money. He's, uh, he looks like that. There's a thing that said like 18 years old. Like, like, look at this guy's like an adult or something. We're being scammed and I can't believe this is happening. Meanwhile, there was a lot of footage. There was a lot of things that came out showing that, uh, I don't think that's really the case because this mom and Quaden have been interviewed before. Um, the, the, the date of the interview and the, and the age range, it all matches up. Instagram photos, because she had like Instagram and all that stuff and showing like, oh, look at him at a Quaden at like four years old or something like that. And the showing the date and the year and it, it lines up with him being nine. Like everything just lined up. And so it was just kind of crazy. And I don't know where it started. A lot of times, <laughs> a lot of times it's 4chan. Usually it's, it's usually it's 4chan. They're like, how can we mess this up? How can we make this really, how can we really just screw with people and then people will just eat it up? And look, man, I understand people want to be skeptical. I get it. Whenever you see stories like this go viral, whenever you see money getting involved and a bunch of money's being raised and it's so much more than is being, um, you know, requested. A lot of times people just want to be like, hey, what's going on here? And a lot of time it has to do with jealousy, right? Because I get it. Just like how I made that little joke, like, oh, I wish I could have some of that money. I mean, yeah, you know, like it doesn't have to be specifically that money donated, but it's just like, how awesome would it be if like a GoFundMe was set up for me? And uh, it's like, hey, I have a bunch of uh, injuries and, you know, medical ain't going to really fix it. 
there's certain things that they're gonna they're like oh you're fine my wrist is messed up my knees messed up my shoulders messed up you know but it's things that i just deal with it kind of a deal but what if everyone raised money for me and then all of a sudden i can be completely okay yeah perfect world stuff who wouldn't love to have a ton of money so yeah sometimes people are like damn i'm i'm angry and i'm jealous let's screw with this kid or let's see let's see if he's a fraud and uh yeah that went pretty viral and I'm, I'm gonna be real though i'm not one of those people that are um i'm not one of those people that are like just like oh this world is so sick i i've lost hope for humanity and all that i'm not one of those people because i like I said, i'm not surprised that happened i'm not surprised in any way shape or form i'm just like yep I, I something was coming i mean they were gonna say hey i don't know about this kid i don't know about this kid at all like something just doesn't add up and i'm like yeah it's gonna happen, man. Hey, I've been like I've been fooled with other stuff is too. Like I'm not I'm not even gonna pretend like I'm oh I'm so savvy and I'm always I always see through all the grifts and I see through all the bullshit. Like it's not about that at all. Like I, I just this particular incident, it was pretty easy to kind of look it up and see if it was uh, real or not. By the time I saw the things trending, people have already debunked it like that fast. Because there's a lot of people that are just extremely savvy. Looked up the dude's name, they looked up the stuff, they found the Instagrams, and they saw everything that matched up. They're like, clearly this isn't a f this isn't an adult. And I know like things like that have happened before, like uh, 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 little people playing off as kids, that they, they'll do some stuff. You know, there's a lot of it doesn't matter. Every size, big and small, there's some terrible people. Uh, but not this situation. And the, the one other thing I want to mention too is, um, and this is really important to me, the one thing that does bother me is I just don't think it's a good idea to post videos like that on social media. I really don't. I know I'm assuming that the mother meant well. I'm assuming she wants the best for her son and she's tired of her son being bullied and she just didn't know what to do and she's like, I just, I'm going to throw this out here and just hope for a miracle or something. And the thing is, with all the money and all that stuff, it doesn't really seem like that'll um, fix the problem. And one thing that really kind of worries me is that putting videos out like that, having that kid like Quaid and Joe grow up, I don't think he's gonna appreciate that shit circulating and being out there, being at his lowest and his weakest having that like out there always if dude wants to be on social media when he's getting older and stuff and there's going to be some people that could just get that video and remind him of this and then you know how fucking awful the internet can be like it's one of those things that if i had a, a mental breakdown or a moment of darkness like that i would never want that stuff to be unearthed or to or to surface like i know what's real i remember how i felt I don't need everybody else to see my business. And so when I see stuff like that, I, I feel like it's a potential to haunt somebody, you know? And it's like, I'm not necessarily 100% blaming the mother because I understand she was desperate and hurting for her child. I get that. But it's one of those things that there are better ways to deal with that. I think that recording the video and possibly sharing it with the faculty with people, the boards of education or whatever, make sure they know this is what's happening. So then the kids that are uh, being bullied are protected better. And, and the, um, you know, the, the kids that are doing the bullying, that they are educated towards, like, you can't be doing this stuff. Like, you can't, you have to make them understand. Because kids aren't that stupid to the point where they're not, they, they know what bullying is. They know what being mean is. They like and when they're being mean to that kid, if somebody were to turn around and start making fun of them, everyone's ganging up on them, the bully, they're going to feel it. They're going to feel like trash and they're going to start crying and being like a little fucking kid. So they know they're not that stupid. You know, they're ignorant, but they, they know they, they know what that feels like. So I'm just saying that it's 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 a bad thing to do. And um, when you see stuff like this going so viral there is the potential for copycats. There's the potential for actual grifters, actual scammers. There's the potential for 
meet people that are desperate for money and maybe even want to get their children in a messed up situation to where it is technically authentic. Technically, their kid was wronged and things need to be corrected or something like that. I just don't like it, man. You know, but what's done is done. It's already out. So it's kind of like moving forward, people in those situations, it's like, let this be a teachable moment across the board, right? Across the board where it's like, all right, clearly people got to do better with bullying. You know, I was lucky that where I grew up, bullying wasn't as insane as a lot of places I've seen and a lot of other places, especially in like, say, Midwest in the United States where it's a, it's really boring you know, there isn't too much to do. It's not like in a metropolis where people are always occupied and doing all this stuff where it's like, well, all we can do is just beat each other up and play football or something. And uh, and uh, I, I hear about bullying cases and I'm like, damn, dude, the schools in my area, dude, like the kids weren't that vicious, man. She's like, I've, I've poked fun at people before, but nothing like to the point where it, it, when you hear about some stuff, I'm like, do people, wow, you know, like, wow, insanity stuff that I've read in like certain books and stories you hear about people growing up and they're telling their life stories and like, yeah, kids, man, vicious because they don't know any better sometimes. They don't know how, they don't know, like I would say most kids don't really know exactly what the ramifications are. They don't really know when they're bullying and being terrible, what that could actually do to someone's psyche and how that could mess them up for life. You know, a lot of times, like, parents aren't even thinking about that. You know, like, hey, bro, you got to be nice to people because you can really mess up somebody. And then I'm also worried about you because once you realize that you've, you've messed somebody's life up forever, how are you going to be able to live with that? So it's teachable stuff, man. Really crazy situation, Really, I mean, I wasn't expecting it to, to 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 be like, oh, this is a this is this is a, an adult and they're scamming. I wasn't expecting that. I was expecting controversy, but not that. That was wild. We just got a letter. Wonder who it's from. Bang. Okay. Now it's time for the final segment, and that is the mailbag. I think I'm just gonna call it that because why not? So if you want to chime in. You can hit me up on patreon.com slash some black guy is in the $2 tier. And I post and like, Hey, ask me some questions. Ask me anything. I will answer every question. If you are trolling, I will still answer, but you may not get a satisfactory answer. <laughs> but let, let's get into this. We have uh, we, we only have a handful of questions this time. I know that's always good. You know, I mean, it's, uh, I'm, I'm either, either way, you're going to have a lot or a little. So the first one comes from workbench. And it says, this is a long one, it says, do you think race relations are finally improving again with people like Chappelle coming back and just murdering again? I feel like everything was so chill in the early 2000s around the last time Dave was killing it. You know, the time when people understood jokes are jokes. I think Key and Peele have helped a bunch too. Has the race baiting bullshit finally died down? Thanks, brother. I appreciate what you do. Um, I don't know if it's, it, well, let's say in contrast to like, say 2012 through 2016, I definitely think it has calmed down a little bit. I think things reached a fever pitch. Things got insane in 2016 because especially the way that, uh, Donald Trump was viewed as, um, the new age Hitler and all that stuff. And people were freaking out and all these movements were starting and there's a bunch of people that were taking advantage of people of color say the, the wrong people were involved with like movements like black lives matter and stuff like that and it was really unfortunate definitely things were chiller back in the day absolutely it was getting to like say things were incredibly racist back in the day back when my grandpa was growing up and then say just as things went on and on and on things were kind of chilling with just little spikes in between like something happening like uh obviously like rodney king and the race riots in la stuff like that things like that would happen and i would say an example of a little bit of a spike was something like trayvon martin or mike brown when stuff like that was happening then there would be these little spikes and a lot of times the spikes were really perpetuated in the media because the media wants views. The, v the media wants views, more eyes. Sponsors pay more money because there's more viewers. That's what they want. 
They want civil unrest. They want things to go crazy. That's what sells. We all know that. I always say, like, imagine, like, say you're playing a video game or something. Imagine there's no conflict in that video game. Are you going to want to play it? Rhetorical. Obviously not. You're not going to want to play it. There has to be some type of conflict. And typically, you feel good when there's some resolution. Uh, the media always want conflict with zero resolution, though. Because that's how the money flows in. Obviously, the more controversial the YouTube video or something, for example, the more views it's going to get. That's just how we are. And it's unfortunate. So a lot of times stuff will, won't be as bad as it nearly is. And then people will have to make it much worse. Like they'll just take certain tapes, certain audio things or something's happening. And then they'll try to mix things up. They'll try to word sentence mix or cut things short and then take things out of context. And that shit sucks. And then so you have a lot of people in the media that are just trying to say everyone's racist and this and that, sex is homophobic, and it's just very tiresome. A lot of times people just are like, dude, I'm tired of hearing this shit. Like, I'm tired. I want to go back to just raising my family, uh, just having a decent job. I want to go back to just loving and just, just having fun, playing video games, just chilling, man. Like, I don't want to be worried about this shit all the time. And uh, I would say Dave Chappelle helped out a little bit, you know, coming back and killing these things. Um, but it's not his goal, though. It's not like his goal is to be like the, the like, I'm going to, I'm going to calm everybody down. I think he just like, I'm just going to say what I want to say. And I love comedy and I'm going to do it. And it definitely helps. Just like you said, Keem P helps a little bit. And I do agree things are a little bit better. Emil Krunsvik ask favorite video game and movie soundtracks hmm game and movie well okay so movie soundtracks um oh man like the thing is like a soundtrack soundtrack i i love the mortal Kombat soundtrack like the original uh motion pictures and um I really like the Batman Forever soundtrack. They had a lot of good stuff on there. That's actually how, um, I think I've, I, I, I don't remember if this is true or not, but I feel like I found off the offspring that way because they covered uh, the song Smash It Up and I really liked that song. I remember me and my little friends, like I was, well, what age was I? It was probably like seven, or eight, something like that. Seven, I think it was seven. And I was just like, man, this, this band's rad. So I always, I grew up liking metal. And, and fast music, and then it's a little bit of that techno and house and stuff, things that were with Mortal Kombat. So it was always kind of mixed in there. Um, I would say an original score, fucking Hans Zimmer always kills it. Gladiator, like some some of the scores in that just give me chills every single time. And uh, as far as video games, uh, Streets of Rage 2 is king. Streets of Rage 2 is my favorite stuff always. It'd always be my favorite, but then like there's a lot of Capcom stuff that is sprinkled in between. That there's like these are these are some things that are so good. Um, but if I want to say like through between Capcom and like uh, like let's say let's say it would have to be Streets of Rage two and Mega Man X. There's like that's the pinnacle for me. There's stuff sprinkled in between, but I'm just gonna give it to those two things, and I gotta go with that. Andrew. Born's Horst. Wait, I think that's Bornhurst. I'm pretty sure that's how you say it. <laughs> Bornhorst. Anywho, Andrew, my boy. Uh, how you doing, Bro Sidon? I'm doing okay other than the lack of sleep. That's the only thing I need I need to sleep more. Um, so many projects I'm doing, or at least I'm trying to do. And then the lack of sleep is actually kind of making it a little tough for me. Um, I need to figure out a way to be a better adult to like, so where I can get everything done and also find enough to where it's like, I can at least get like six hours of sleep. And uh, sometimes it's just about a little bit more um, discipline and doing things more quickly. One thing is that uh, a lot of times when I'm editing, I like to take my time and make sure everything's in order. And then sometimes I think of better things if I'm not trying to rush through it. And sometimes I need to like challenge myself to like see if you can get all this done within a specific time. So not where it's like you, it's like completely rushed, but you're at least completely focused. 
And so other than that, man, I just need to sleep more. I hope you're doing well too, bro. And the last question comes from David Shear. Did you get your YouTube pin with 100,000 subscribers from the Emo Negro incident? <laughs> I think it would be cool if you can let us know when you get enough subscribers because nobody likes when people slash dickheads try to shame someone or put them down for being who they are. <laughs> uh, yeah, so if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, and actually, um, I probably need to promote this a lot more because um, in, in, in episode two, I created a YouTube channel called Emo Negro for the specific sole reason of getting it to 100K. Like, I don't think I'm even going to post any content on there. I just wanted to get 100K because I want to get one of those YouTube plaques that say Emo Negro on it. <laughs> that's it. Like, the, that's the only reason because I think that would just be hilarious. Like, uh, some people found it pretty funny. Like, it's actually over here. Let me just, let me just step off really quick. Grab this thing. Uh, just not ruin my shit while I'm grabbing this thing. But uh, if you are a viewer, you will see the plaque and it says uh, some black guy on it. <laughs> so I, I think that's pretty hilarious. Like I, I like that. It's like, oh, here's this like award. Here's this achievement. And then it just says, oh, who's it for? Oh, some black guy. And uh, I just really want one that says emo Negro. I think that would be... I think that would be delightful, man. I think that would be delightful because, like, to be 100% honest, like, um, maybe maybe when I'm, like, done doing YouTube, I can kind of reflect on how cool that is and think about, like, oh, 100,000 people. That's a lot of people and all that shit. But it hasn't, like, none of that stuff has really sunk in. So <laughs> I, that's why, like, I, I just want that thing as kind of like a meme to have the other one because this one almost kind of seems like a meme to me as well. And um, there was a time, though, when I legitimately wanted the 1 million subscriber play button. But that, I quickly didn't want it after YouTube kind of usurped us. And with the first adpocalypse, at that point, I was like, this isn't going to work. Because the type of content that I make, I'm not going to be able to grow like I should be growing. Or like the way that I was growing. Because if you look at my, the trajectory of how my channel was growing, it was, it was, it definitely, I'd probably be closer to it. I'd probably be like closer to like maybe 800K, I would imagine, or something like that. But the way that the algorithm has absolutely punished me and things were, thought, and it's not me specifically. I think there's just, and when I say punish, I don't really mean punish. Because I don't think it's, I don't think I'm punished. I, I genuinely believe that it's an algorithm issue, like there's a bug. I think that there are some things that they don't know how to fix and they don't really give a fuck about fixing it. Especially because, just to give a quick example, um, there's a feature that you can do, you can link your Teespring, you know, your merchandise store to your YouTube channel. My main channel, Some Black Guy, is not allowed to do it. It's just not allowed to do it. But there's a lot of features that I'm not allowed to do on there. And I say, hey, guys, could you please fix this? And they're like, oh, well, you know, it's it's stuff. We're rolling it out, and it'll be available at some point in the future. Uh, bruh, no, it's not. <laughs> like, I started a new channel called Black Metal. has 13,000 subscribers. I made it late last year, and I'm already eligible, and I have my merchandise linked to that fucking channel. <laughs> 13,000 subs. Hey, uh, you guys are here for the black metal content, but hey, how about you grab shirts from my main channel that has no link to this shit? You know, like, it, it's just, it's ridiculous. That's where I'm at, though. That's where I'm at, and that's why I don't really give a fuck about having, like, the gold play button or a million subscribers or anything like that. It's just, whatever, man. YouTube is broken. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's gonna do it for me. I just want to say thank you so much for listening to this or watching this. However you're consuming it, I want to also let you guys know that this is available on iTunes and Spotify. Uh, I tried to get it on the Google Play podcast, but it's not working. I think there's something else I got to do because they say, hey, you're approved. But um, uh, what? I think there's like a specific app you might need to download, like a podcasting app, and you can't get it directly from Google Play. I don't understand how it works. Um, I've never, I haven't had an Android device since uh, Droid X in 2010. Uh, I've been on Apple since I moved back to California because I was living in Arizona for a while. So I apologize, guys, for the Google Play people, the Google Music or Google Podcasts or whatever. 
Um, if something is up there, please let me know. But hey, it's available on Spotify and iTunes. That's cool shit right there. And YouTube, of course, if you're watching this. So thank you guys so much, man. Um, I actually really enjoy doing this. And uh, y'all have a great day or night wherever you're consuming this or what time you're consuming this. I love you guys very much. And I'll see you in episode four next week. That's right. That's right, baby. Ooh, come here. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs>